Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto had power of Orochimaru's and attack in the forest of death? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. In Konohagakure, an event known to most as the Chunin exam was currently taking hold and at the moment. The participants were in the second phase testing area, the forest of death and for most. This part of the exam was simple as they were able to easily complete the task before the deadline but for others, however, it wasn't quite as simple due to the interference of certain roadblocks they had to face, and the 15-year-old Naruto Uzumaki was one of those who were grouped in the ladder because right now his body was laying right on the ground all bruised and bloodied with branches of different sizes and shapes littered all around it. Why? His team had just encountered one of the three legendary Sanin and he, Orochimaru, did quite a number on him, Naruto. Ugh, in, snake, the blonde groaned as he held his throbbing head in pain while getting up from the grass. In, Kakashi Sensei. He cursed, as he got up from the grassy ground. In, Sasuke. He cursed again as he realized that he couldn't feel his chakra flowing properly because whatever the Sanin done to him back then, when those fingers were slammed into his gut, well, they seemed to have worked. How though was he going to continue with this exam with a messed up chakra system? He wondered, he wouldn't even be in this position if Kakashi had properly trained him like he was supposed to do as a teacher, and not focus on the Uchiha and then even more once he unlocked his sharing him. It was all about the duck-haired bastard he groused, though he really couldn't blame Kakashi for his current situation, as much as he wanted to do otherwise because he wouldn't have been in this situation if he hadn't stupidly underestimated Orochimaru. He should have gone all out from the very start. Maybe if I didn't care about the bastard's reaction then going all out wouldn't have been an issue. He muttered, trailed away from the area he fell, he was now actively on the hunt for his teammates to make sure they were okay. Orochimaru was tough and Sasuke suffered serious injuries. He wondered if Sakura was okay because with Sasuke temporarily out, it was up to her to hold the fort until he got to where they were. Sakura-chan, hold on, and try and keep that bastard alive till I get there. Unfortunately Sakura wouldn't see Naruto for a while because rather than lose himself in thought, he should have paid attention to his surroundings because if he did, he would have noticed the soft patch of earth his foot touched, and he definitely wouldn't have fallen into the black abyss below the hollow patch that crumbled under his weight. Bitch. Fortunately there was a solid ground which his already badly injured body smashed into. Unfortunately it was far away from the source of light caused by his lack of awareness to his surroundings. Whatever. Dot the same lack of awareness that made him miss the mass of matter falling from the sky and heading towards his location before it ultimately slammed into him, shocked him with a 1000 volts of electricity and knocked him out. Meanwhile, as the white mass of matter melted with Naruto's skin, seeping into his wounds and forming around his body to ultimately create a white cocoon that was surrounded by webs, within the blonde's mind, a strange orange light appeared and took its true form a humanoid male with a muscular pale white skin and glowing red eyes. Its head was long and oval shaped with a sharp chin and five spikes on top that could be hair, and it had spikes protruding from its shoulder and had clawed fingers and toes. Who, or what was this being you ask? Well this being was Bahan Bahans, a being from a wild race of aliens living in Mars, and he was one of the few survivors from said planet, who just woke up from a forced hibernation, one that prolonged his inevitable death as Bahan himself was close to death when he arrived on this planet in his bio ship, and he would have surely died had he not slammed into Naruto and sank inside the boy's body once he made contact with his skin. He was in the mindscape of the boy because first and foremost all Martians were telepaths, however he never expected to find himself in a dark sewer, one that gave him a pause as he sensed a speck of subdued darkness that did not belong here. He could tell. Eventually he followed the dark feeling to an open area where found a giant wall. The wall seemed to be keeping the dark feeling at bay Bahan realized, as he was approaching the wall before he placed a hand on it, he was suddenly assaulted by two sets of memories, one from a giant mass of chaotic energy that took the form of a fox, and the other from a 15-year-old, the boy whose body he was currently inhabiting. Bahan focused on the fox's memories first as it was older. In studying said memory, he, Bahan, gained a pretty good grasp of the history of this world from the fox, Kurama. 
It was apparently created by this world's most powerful being who was revered as the Sage of Six Paths, and from the powers this Sage displayed up to his very appearance, Bahan guessed that he was an extraterrestrial, but it wasn't one he had ever encountered, and as he continued looking through the Kurama's memories, he saw the Sage sired two half-human sons. Indra and Asura Otsutsuki, those were their names respectively. And aside from that, he, Bahan noted that Kurama wasn't the first of its kind to exist because like Indra had Asura as a sibling and vice versa, Kurama had eight others that were all spawned before him. It, but just because it was born last, that didn't mean that it was the weakest. Bahan noted that this beast, Kurama, possessed an inferiority complex that gave, no doubt, birth to its arrogance, but Bahan didn't dwell on that, instead he continued on his history viewing. Anyways, from then on, Bahan watched as the fox observed the lives of the humans around him as a guardian to this land called the Elemental Nations, watching as its creator's son grew to hate his younger brother for being chosen as the heir to their father's powers. Bahan noted that the hate was so strong, that it lived on in the clans born from the twin children of the sage, who knew no what they were fighting about, and as a result of this hate, centuries later, when the great-grandchild of Indra Otsutsuki was born, who Kurama believed to be the reincarnation of his ancestors, Indra, the great beast was found and enslaved due to the visual powers gained from his creator's bloodline. Bahan saw the man with red eyes take Kurama's free will and made it do his bidding, and he watched as the latest heir to Asura's clan defeated both the man who ensnared Kurama, and the great beast itself but rather than let the beast roam free following the defeat of its tormentor, Asura's great-grandson decided to contain its power and trap it within the woman who helped him battle Indra's reincarnation. And as if that wasn't enough, Asura's great-grandson, who was thought to be his reincarnation, proceeded to find Kurama's siblings, trap them, and distribute them to the rest of the villages around his as if the nine great beasts were some sort of price to be won. How despicable! From then on Bahan watched as the fox gained a harsh hatred for humans, one that only grew for over the course of his long life as he was released and resealed when the previous host died into a new host that was chosen and the boy Karama was currently residing in, was its third prison. Bahan didn't know how to feel about that as he realized that the last two hosts were chosen when they were at an adolescent age. As opposed to Karama's first host that was past her prime, and while said first host was the oldest, this host the great beast was sealed in was the youngest, chosen to seal the great beast when he wasn't even a day old by the same man that birthed him and seemed to care more about his village than his family, so instead of instantly judging Kurama's latest host, Bahan decided to focus on the teenager's memories and then judge afterwards, and honestly? He didn't like what he saw. The boy's entire existence was shunned by his village. It was like being a white Martian on Mars. He watched as the boy grew up in a village that despised him for something he could not control. Physically in some rare cases, and mentally abusing him because of their fear and hatred and while he might understand a little bit on where the tormentors were coming from, it did not give them the right to be so disgustingly antagonistic to this young child and due to this, Bahan wasn't sure that as an individual he would ever grow to like these humans. But based on what he had seen from this child, he felt that there might be a little hope for the human race as a whole, and maybe, just maybe, the Martian race if his plan to help Naruto was going to perform as he needed it to despite the fact that said plan would result in the end of his existence, he didn't mind that as was already close to death. Try not to disappoint me Naruto Uzumaki Otsutsuki. And with that, Bahan went to work, with Naruto not knowing at all what he, Bahan, was doing and not knowing that he, Naruto, was going to be a completely different person when his body emerged from its metamorphosis. Hours later. A team of genin wearing the rain village headband moved as silently as they could across unknown hostile territory. The forest of death, and like every other genin squad currently present within the forest, their goal was to find a scroll from an opposing team of which, so far, they have found none off, and it was starting to be frustrating. Four hours and not a single pathetic genin team in sight, one of the trio stated as he and his teammates suddenly stopped and remained perched one of the branches of the various enormous trees within the forest. If we return home empty-handed, leader Sama will have our heads. He picked us to show the might of the rain village and so far, we're failing. It's been four hours out of the five days we were given to find a scroll and head to the tower. The one crouching next to the one who spoke, stated. We still have enough time to plant traps all around the forest and catch a target. With our illusions, we can't miss. That's true, but we won't be able to keep track of the traps because there's just the three of us. The third one 
The one who was standing on the other side of the first one who was the first to speak, stated. I say we head to the tower and then set a trap. That way not only will we be on time to our goal, we would also be one of the first people to have finished this course of the exams. Before more could be said, however, the initial speaker of the group silenced his teammates and then covered his whole team in an illusion because he heard a rustling sound coming from the bushes. And he believed that it might be a team of unsuspecting genin they could finally pounce on unfortunately for him and his team, he was part right, because while a genin squad didn't pop out of the bushes, something else, or someone, did, and he was part of a genin team no doubt because there was no reason for this person to be here within the forest in this hour aside from the reason of being a competitor of the chunin exams, like they. What if he doesn't have a scroll? Then we force him to take us to his teammates and have them give us their scroll. The male they were looking at had an ivory-colored skin with a mane of gravity-defying, sunny blonde spiky hair with a few red streaks and a lithe muscular frame. Meanwhile he had a pair of pale blue eyes, a trio of whisker marks on each side of his cheeks, and finally, a height of 5 inches 8. Come to think of it, one of the genins narrowed their eyes. Doesn't that guy look kinda familiar? His clothes were ruined so they were unable to fully make out what this seemingly familiar figure wore. Aside from the fact that it might have been an orange and blue jumpsuit and a pair of blue shinobi sandals. Wait a minute, I think that's the guy that blurted out some shit about being Hokage back in the exam hall, stated another one of the trio, referring to the brief show they had in the written portion of the exam hall where a guy with a similar appearance, but a little bit neater, jumped up and challenged the exam proctor. Yeah, I think he said his name was Naruto something. He's the guy responsible for so many of us passing. Well then, why don't we show him how much we appreciate that? The trio wore similar smirks on their faces. Yeah, let's. But as they leapt off the branch they were on, vines sprouting from the branch they were on, caught their legs and tangled them, restricting them from moving while slamming their bodies against each other. Hey, what the, is this Mokudan? Since when did the leaf have that? Let us go you freak. Naruto. However, ignored them as he kept on trailing ahead. Why? Because his brain was still processing the information that was literally forced into it nearly two hours ago, back when he woke up and forced himself out of that larva that somehow formed around him. What information could draw out this numb reaction from the transformed blonde, you asked? Well, it was the fact that he just realized that compared to the entire universe, his world was just a minor speck amongst a large grain, and like his own planet, there were others that lived alongside it in her solar system, and along with these planets came their own alien species, their culture, and their own positive and negative environmental advancements or withdrawals. He learned that of his solar system, from what he was able to pick up, the planet, Mars, was at the pinnacle of technological advancement and peace, until it was invaded by an outer world species of beings seeking claim to the planet Mars because of their greed. The invaders struck before the Martian knew what happened. Images of the war played over. It was like he was there, experiencing the war firsthand as the enemy troopers came down fast and hard, killing many in the first attack. It was like he was there experiencing how the Martian race were both outgunned and outmatched because of the fact that they were a peaceful race and thus were with no concrete protection against the hostile invaders because of the fact that most Martians didn't believe in the senselessness that was violence. Why was he having these images? Why was he having this experience? He didn't know. All he knew that he was powerless to stop watching as the Martians, despite the fact that they were rallied and tried to fight back, ultimately lost with their race being doomed to fall shortly afterwards to the might of the enemy. And while a rare few managed to survive and escaped as they realized their failure and thus scattered across the universe, the fact that their home and majority of their race was lost wasn't going to change and well, Naruto couldn't help but feel for them. He couldn't help but relate to them because like the white Martians, the Uzumaki clan were a peaceful clan targeted by an armada of outside forces driven by fear and greed. Fear as they, the outside forces, were afraid of the Uzumaki clan's fast progress, and greed as they wanted what the clan possessed within their vaults and didn't care who they'd have to kill to get it. And like the White Martians, in order to survive, what remained of the Uzumaki clan fled and scattered across the elemental nations. Naruto couldn't help but frown. Both clans. They were peaceful and ahead of their time. Known for their various advancements that helped sustain peace in their communities, two clans destined for greatness were demolished by the greed and fear of their enemies, and as said enemies enjoyed themselves with the loots of their victims, 
the remaining of said victims went into hiding, fearing that if they do come out in the open, they'd be exterminated for good and well, that wasn't something he was going to let happen. He didn't know what happened to him back when he was knocked out as he fell into that pit hole nor did he know how he managed to find his way out. All he knew was that for some reason, not only did he feel like he was a thousand times better than before he faced Orochimaru, somehow he knew he could do all those things that he saw the Martians do during the war. Flight, advanced shapeshifting, a lot more advanced than the henge, moving things with your mind, phasing, he wasn't a Martian and yet for some reason, he genuinely felt like one, which means that he felt the need for justice towards the Martian race. Justice that the Uzumaki was denied, justice he was going to deliver, that was why the first thing he was going to do, was take out the enemies that were responsible for the destruction of both clans, and then after that, his personal mission would be to find the remaining Uzumaki and Martians and create a new safe haven for them. And he felt that whatever happened in the hours of his unconsciousness was going to help him with completing his new goal in life. Being Hokage, forget that, there were things more important than running a village that will never appreciate you no matter how hard you try, especially when said things involved the possibility of traveling into space. Ah, but right now, finishing this Chunin exams with a clean bill of health, and the safety and security of his teammates was the first thing he should really be doing, before he could even think about moving forward with his goal. And the source of that scream is a good way to start. He left, all the while ignoring the fact that there were three unconscious rain genin bodies hanging upside down from a tree branch entangled with vines. Karen, meanwhile, couldn't help but curse her useless of teammates because while one was laying on the ground next to her split near completely in half, the other was eaten by a big bear and if she were honest though, she wished she would have been the one to finish them, as then she wouldn't have had to deal with this trouble. Those idiot teammates of hers foolishly attacked a massive bear and were quickly killed. Now here she was, caught between a bear on crack or steroids and a tree, while clutching an earth scroll to her chest and remaining still as she was too scared to move. She closed her eyes when the bear charged at her completely missing the person that swooped in to help her. It wasn't until she heard the several thuds and felt nothing hit her that she realized that she was still alive, so she opened her eyes, and what she saw was something straight out of a storybook. Oh Kami, he's so hot. Naruto blinked, blushing as he picked that up. Um, thanks? Also, he was no longer wearing his tattered and shredded jumpsuit. Now he wore a pair of black pants over a pair of black shinobi boots and under a long sleeve, thigh length, hooded robe that was orange with black stripes. It was an orange and black version of his orange and blue turtleneck jacket. And this was something Karen noted as she was drooling slightly at the man in front of her. But then she froze, blushed, and blinked as her mind processed what her hero said. Oh my gosh, did he hear that? Um, yeah. The red streaked blonde frowned, turning to stare at the redhead. I mean was I supposed to not? You were pretty much shouting that out. Okay now Karen was confused, because she was sure she was speaking without her lips moving meaning that she spoke in her mind. But just to make sure she wasn't making things up, she was going to perform an experiment. Um, hi? She thought. Any traces of the blush were now gone from her face. My name is Karen and I'm from the grass village. Naruto blinked, knowing that she didn't move her lips at all when she said that. Um. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, he thought, watching as she jumped in shock. And I'm a genin from the leaf village. Karen, pointing her finger at the blonde, screamed, You can read minds. Yeah, yeah. Stated a grinning Naruto who brought his hands to his face, clenching and unclenching it in excitement. You're right. And if I can do that, then that means I can do many other cool things. Wah. The redhead couldn't help but stare jaw dropped watching as before her her savior was doing amazing things, moving things with his mind, turning invisible, floating, walking through solid objects, shape-shifting without any hand signs or smoke, is, is this some kind of bloodline ability? I guess you can call it that, Naruto stated, excited grin still visible on his face as he floated over Karen and stood in front of her. He wore a look of slight concern though as he said his next words. Are you okay? That bear really did a number on your teammates. I hope he didn't hurt you. Karen turned her head away from the blonde, scowling. My stupid teammates got what they deserved. There's no love lost between us but honestly, I wish I did the did myself because of what they and that stupid village of mine puts me through. Believe me, Naruto said, crossing his hands over his chest. 
I know exactly how you feel. My teammates always give me hell and my sensei does nothing to stop it. And as for this village, it's not all sunshine and flowers like many think it is. Why, what happened? The redhead wondered. Naruto frowned at that. As much as I'd like to answer, I don't like to give out details of my life to someone I just met, he replied, scratching his chin before he turned away from Karen with a blush dusting on his cheeks. Even if they're cute. Not only did Karen's blush resurface, it went all over her skin on the outside, meanwhile mentally, she squealed in excitement, prompting the red streaked blonde to cringe because of how loud that particular thought was. All was silent a moment later, however. I guess that means that I have to go back home. Karen stated, realizing the fact that with her teammates dead she was unable to stay in Konoha for the remainder of the exams and thus she won't get to spend time with the man who saved her life. She already disliking the thought about returning to Kusa alone. Even more so because there was no sure doubt that the village she was raised in would pin the blame for the death of her two teammates on her. Something to add is ammo in their continuous and definitely unfair mistreatment towards her person and fortunately for her. Naruto was able to easily pick up this thought, and while his ability to read people's mind was new, he was able to extend the limit of his mind reading to her surface thoughts to the memories associated with said thoughts that prompted that negative reaction from her, and as he viewed said memories, he was stunned because in front of him was a person who was mistreated by their village like Haku was, like he was. No, I'm not letting her go back to that life, he thought. I might not have been able to help Haku, but I'll help her. Naruto looked down at Karen. She was a bit shorter than he was, and scratched the back of his head. Say Karen, you don't really have any reason to continue this exam, but instead of running off on your lonesome, why not join me and my team ya, yeah, no. Hang around with me as till at least we finish this part of the exam? He offered. Karen appeared to mull over the thought for about a few seconds before she shrugged. Might as well. Nothing better to do. She didn't do well to force down the returning excitement and rising of her heart rate at the offer. However she immediately latched onto Naruto's back as he told her to hop on when he turned around and bent down in a crouching position. I'm sort of new to this flying thing, the red streaked blonde stated, standing up straight and tilting his head to look over his shoulder at Karen. But I sort of need to find my teammates as quickly as I can so make sure to hold on tightly because this ride might get a little bit bumpy. Karen's response at that was to squeal in fright and surprise as she and the blonde shot off to the clouds in flight leaving nothing but a trail of scattered leaves, the remains of a pair of Kusa Genins and finally, a knocked out grizzly bear. On the other side of the spectrum meanwhile, Sakura was busy keeping vigilant as she guarded her unconscious teammate and the boy she had a crush on with the latest attack on her and her teammates still being fresh in her analytical mind. Sasuke-kun. Why did he go after you? She wondered. What did he want with you? What did he do to you? What's happening to your body? Are you going to be okay? She set up traps around the perimeter surrounding her and her teammate, so she wasn't worried about an ambush or being caught by surprise. But she was more worried, however, about the fact that Sasuke was currently unconscious, leaving her alone against a forest filled with hostels she couldn't take care of on her own even if. Yeah, she received help with training from Naruto after it was clear that Kakashi was going to be focusing his attention on training Sasuke. Sasuke, now that you've unlocked your Sharingan, you and I are going to be focusing on mastering and maturing it. No fair Kakashi sensei. Why does Sasuke get special training when me and Sakura chan don't? Naruto, you have way too much chakra. If you want to receive any sort of special training from me, you are going to have to learn control, and I mean more than what you have right now because that's essential in a battlefield therefore until I say otherwise, your task is going to be working on that because a time will come where the power of your shadow clones isn't going to be enough. But. But, Sakura, while you have perfect chakra control, your chakra levels need work so while Naruto works on improving his chakra control, you're going to be working on increasing your chakra levels to at least chunin level chakra and luckily, I have the perfect exercise for you to work with. She didn't mind that Sasuke received private training from Kakashi Sensei. She understood that Sasuke needed all the help he was going to get if he was going to succeed in ending the life of the one who annihilated his clan so privately she cheered for him getting the special training from Kakashi, even when she was training on the side with Naruto. However, Orochimaru did a number on her on her team. With his goal set on attaining the Sharingan, the Sanin tracked them down and stealthily followed after them after the exams started before proceeding to attack she and the rest of her team when he zeroed in on the opportunity to do so, and after biting down on Sasuke's neck, 
giving Sasuke a gift, he disappeared. Well more like she proceeded to snatch her teammate and flee as hard as her legs could carry her before the Sanin did something else to him and well, hours later, she was here. Forcing herself to stay awake in case she and Sasuke were attacked while Sasuke recovering because her plan was to nurse Sasuke back to health, wait till he wakes up, and then together they move out to find Naruto who had disappeared when Orochimaru tossed him away after he did something to her hyperactive teammate's stomach. Wake up soon Sasuke-kun, she was already tired of this exam. While she felt that this was going to be tough, she didn't expect the Chunin exams to be this tough. She wasn't strong enough to continue on with the trials up until the very end, if in fact it wasn't for the insistence of Naruto and Sasuke-kun, she wouldn't have joined them at the exams in the first place, and because of disappointing the two of them, Sasuke more so than Naruto, she was afraid to give up, meaning she'd have to stand strong until the right opportunity presents itself. At least then she could give up with dignity, I'll never give up, that's my nindo, my ninja way. The face of a familiar blonde made her frown. Naruto. She wondered where he was. Back when Orochimaru attacked, when the Sanin bit Sasuke's neck, she was too worried about Sasuke's health and the fact that he, Orochimaru, might attack again to make sure if her other teammate, Naruto, aka the one who took time to help her improve herself, was okay, and she hated herself for it, even as she was watching over the boy she had a massive crush on. Sasuke-kun. What would you say if I told you that I abandoned Naruto to save you? But before she could get the answer she wanted, her ears twitched, and in response her hand snapped a kanai towards the location she picked up that rustling sound, only to frown as she heard the sound of her kanai stabbing a piece of wood. Must have been my imagination. Dot. Behind the bushes her kanai passed through, however, a certain grim trio of genin were stalking the pink-haired female member of Team 7 from their position, while they remained hidden successfully within the leaves. These figures had the symbol for sound scraped on their headband, and from left to right respectively, their names were Zaku, Dosu and Kin, and what they were doing right now. Completing a mission for their leader. As Lord Orochimaru commanded, our target is the unconscious one, Sasuke Uchiha. Dosu reminded his two, teammates, in his gruff voice. It was on the tree behind him that the kanai shot at them by the pink-haired female remained. I don't know why he wants us to kill him when he's more valuable to us alive than dead, but we must do as our lord says. Attacking them when they are like this, Zaku scoffed, crossing his hands over his chest. It's almost too boring, the Uchiha brat being awake might have given us more of a chance to show the power of the sound village. There's still plenty of other genin we can fight in the forest and a lot of them are sure to be stronger than her. Kin, the female of the sound trio, had stated while placing her hand on her hip. And if I were you, I'd get this over with as quickly as I can so that I can go find some real challenge. The three of them were surrounded by a genjutsu. Kin was the one who set it up because when they'd landed on their spot, they'd made an unnecessary amount of noise that would have given them away, but because of who they were dealing with, it wasn't really necessary, at least that was what's on their mind. There was supposed to be a third one, according to Kabuto, but he's not here. It's not like that will matter, he's probably as weak as his two teammates. Both of you, shut up. If you don't want Lord Orochimaru to have our heads, then we proceed with the mission no matter the setback. Now help me set this up. Dot. From her position, Sakura's ear twitched again as she picked up another noise from the same bushes. She spied said bushes with narrowed eyes and as she saw a squirrel heading towards her, immediately she snapped into action grabbing a stone from ground beside her and then throwing it at said critter, causing the scared animal to scurry away from her in fright. I may be exhausted, she thought, eyeing the explosive note on the back of the retreating animal. But it's going to take a little more than a weak parlor trick like that to take me out. So much for your amazing plan. Zaku snorted, watching with amusement as the squirrel with the explosive note tagged on its back scurried away from their target. Wanna bet she was able to spot it. No, Dosu stood up from his position and set his weapon. But whether that plan would have worked or not, it doesn't matter, because in the end the result is always going to be the same, with us coming out on top, let's go. Understood. Meanwhile, as Sakura was being attacked by the sound genin, Karen was visibly quivering in her boots as she remained tightly fastened on the back of her white knight who was. At the moment, 
busy using his mental prowess to lock onto the thoughts of his teammates so that he could use that as a way to track them. Something she suggested he should do as neither of them had a chakra source that she could lock onto and track said teammates with, however. As she knew this was his first time using his bloodline abilities, something she was still curious about, she wished that he could have done the thoughts scanning on the ground and while not she was busy hanging off of him because at least, she wouldn't have to think about slipping and spattering on the ground. I'm sure that won't happen, she thought, squeezing onto her lifeline tighter. Naruto-kun will be fast enough save me before I hit the ground. Naruto. Meanwhile, who was busy with filtering away the thoughts he was picking with his mind-reading abilities, picked up the thoughts of his passenger, and pausing from his work he turned to her, grinning. Don't worry Karen, I'll make sure you won't fall. Today was the first time he accessed these powers, yes that was true, but it for some reason, he felt like he's had them his entire life. Maybe that was why he knew how to use them so well despite the fact that he never actually trained with them. And he wondered why that was so, along with why it felt like he was him and someone else at the same time. Anyways. The red streaked blonde shook his head, forcing himself back to the situation at hand. With so many people around, and with their thoughts all over the place, it's going to take a while for me to pinpoint the exact location my teammates. Sasuke-kun and Naruto are counting on me, I can't fail them. The familiar voice made Naruto freeze, stopping in the air as he looked around. That voice, that was Sakura-chan right now, Naruto-kun. He dropped down to a tree, landed on a branch, closed his eyes, and focused as hard as he could, and reaching out with his new ability to read minds, he tried as hard as he possible to trace the voice of his teammate while ignoring the thoughts of those around him. There and it took a while but he was able to lock on to Sakura's thoughts once he was able to filter out her voice from the voice of the others, and while he could relax from that, he could not relax at the fact that she was surrounded by four others, holding out as best as she could while Sasuke's unconscious body was recovering from the damages it suffered while they fought Orochimaru, and there was the fact that she was about to drop from exhaustion. Hopefully, I can still make it before it's too late. Naruto looked at Karen's confused face. You know what? Forget about me saying it's going to take a while to find my teammates because I just did, and they're in trouble, he stated. So I'm going to need you to hold on tight, cause I'm gonna be speeding up a little. Can you do that? Um, good. The red streaked blonde didn't even wait for an answer from Karen before he shot off from the branch he was on like a rocket, destroying it and breaking the sound barrier, which was heard throughout the entire forest, but did he care? No. All that was in his mind was the safety of his teammate. Hang on Sakura-chan, I'm coming. With Sakura. Moments earlier. Zaku. Snorted. You're not as bad as I originally expected you to be girly. He commented with a look of amusement on his face. When I thought about taking you down, I didn't think you'd fight this hard but unfortunately for you, things didn't turn out the way you wanted them to did they? Luckily for you we have no interest in ending your life. We're here for the Uchiha and he's right behind you. Move. Sakura shook her head in defiance. Her stance was firmer now than before. You'll have to kill me first, if you want me to move. She snarled. I haven't even begun to fight. As she was panting a bit, showing that exhaustion of all things was slowly starting to creep while she held her kunai knife in front of her in a defensive position as she stared at her three sound genin in front of her, she realized at that moment that she might lose this battle. That was the moment she cursed Kakashi-sensei. Unfortunately for her, Dosu saw straight through her bluff. You got guts girl, I'll give you that. He said, too bad, it can only take you so far. And with his hand drawn back, he charged at Sakura, but he, along with the rest of his team, was suddenly knocked back by a powerful attack which was accompanied by a loud cry. Konoha Senpu, and the culprit was none other than the student of Konoha's beautiful green beast. I am Rock Lee, and I am at your service Sakura-chan. And that proud proclamation from Rock Lee came with a grin, a thumbs up, and a wink of one of his white eyes for added effect, something that caused everyone to feel a shiver run up their spine. And as for Sakura, despite her wanting nothing more to scream in agony at Rock Lee's appearance, she was actually filled with relief, something that forced a smile to form on her face as she looked at the green beast. Thank you, Lee. Zaku recovered from his attack and scoffed. TCH, looks like more of you Konoha freaks have come to play. He stated before slouching back a bit and tilting his head upwards as he looked at Lee with a sneer. 
It doesn't matter. You'll all fall by the will of Orochimaru-sama. Zaku, Kin, you both go for the Uchiha. I'll handle the freak. Sakura, meanwhile, closed her eyes and took a deep breath as the two sound genin charged at her. Flashback. The pinket frowned at Naruto's muttering. Stupid Kakashi-sensei, he said. Stupid Sasuke. Instead of complaining, you should do what Kakashi-sensei says. Sakura scolded. He's right to want to focus more time on Sasuke. Who else is around to teach him how to use his Sharingan the right way? But wasn't he the one who said, those who abandon their comrades are worse than trash? The blonde argued, causing Sakura to pause. By picking Sasuke over us, he's doing just that. How are we supposed to count on him in the battlefield if he can't even keep the integrity of his oath? Sakura furrowed her brows in thought, then she huffed. He didn't break his oath you idiot. Sasuke-kun is his comrade, and he's helping Sasuke reach his full potential. She crossed her hands over her chest. And besides, he gave us our own training exercise, so it's not like he's abandoning us. She watched as Naruto scoffed, turned, and walked away from her, a move that surprised her because she had thought Naruto would have agreed with her and apologized because he had a crush on her and wouldn't want to do anything to jeopardize her feeling towards him, but this. H hey, wait, she chased after him, where do you think you're going? Kakashi sensei said we should stay here and do our work. No, he didn't, Naruto stated, not even stopping as he spoke. He just told us what to do, not where and when to do it, and as far as I'm concerned, I'll use this opportunity to do some actual training whatever he thinks training is. Sakura snorted at that, it's not like what you have in mind is actually better than what Kakashi sensei said. The blonde stopped. Actually, yes it is. Naruto reached into his pouch and after ruffling it a bit, he brought out a piece of paper. Sakura was confused at what the blonde was trying to show her because all she could see was a blank sheet of paper but then when it seemed like he channeled chakra through it, the paper was still for a second, then it perfectly split in half, before one half crinkled and another half soaked wet. Wait, the pinket blinked. Is that what I think it is? Pretty sweet. Huh, Naruto grinned, when I first saw that Kakashi sensei wasn't going to be training us, I snuck into the shinobi library and managed to ruffle a bit until I eventually found the part where they had elemental jutsus. Obviously I wasn't going to ignore it so I snuck a few scrolls out, and when I found out that you needed these papers to know the type of element you work best with, I went to the weapons store to get them. I'm already halfway through my wind scroll and I thought Kakashi sensei could help me with a few pointers so that I can move on to water but well. Sakura understood what Naruto wanted to say without him even getting to finish the sentence, and yet while this was so, she just couldn't believe that the dead last, of all people, had already progressed so far without her, Kakashi and Sasuke noticing. It was so, so. If you want, I can help you find out your element so that you can train with me, Naruto offered. I mean, Kakashi's opinion is all well and good, but you're one of the smartest people I know. You could help me better than Kakashi ever could. The pink-haired girl suddenly turned meek, tucking a strand of hair behind her head and turning away from him. I, she hesitated, we shouldn't disobey Kakashi sensei like that. He has a reason for doing things the way he does. If disobeying Kakashi means getting stronger so that I can help my village more, he'd stated. Then I'll do it over and over again. That's part of the whole point of becoming a shinobi, to protect Konoha as best as you could, a frown formed on Naruto's face. Think of it this way, if you become stronger, Sasuke's sure to notice you more. That suddenly caught her interest. All right, let's do this. She paused, but if I get in trouble, I'm blaming you. And at that, Naruto grinned. Flashback end. Doden. Ganchuso no jutsu. And as she slammed her hands in the ground, she watched as from random locations, large thick spikes rose up from the earth and quickly extended towards their targets, the charging kin and Zaku. This was the only jutsu she was able to perform shortly after finding out that her main element was earth, and trying as hard as possible to make sure she was with the chakra needed to perform said elemental jutsu without any complications, and it annoyed her because she was unable to master this technique to the level she wanted it to be before the chunin exams popped up. Impressive Sakura-chan, but you have to be more careful. Case in point, she wasn't able to get the spikes to act the way she needed them to meaning that because of their randomness. 
They could harm an unsuspecting ally, and Rock Lee could have been said ally if he wasn't nimble and quick enough to act in response to her attack. Unfortunately for her, Dosu was just as sharp as he did the same as Lee, hopping and avoiding the spikes randomly shooting at him. Then as he reached a safe out of reach distance, he crouched on the ground and charged at Lee once more with his melody arm thrown back. Zaku, stop playing around and get to the Uchiha. Zankaha, despite the sweat she that was trailing down from her forehead, Sakura knew that she couldn't give up in her defense of Sasuke and kept on pumping chakra to her technique, even as a blast of pressurized air shot out of the tubes of the palm of Zaku. The sound shinobi who responded to the commands of the one facing Rock Lee, shattered most of the spikes she summoned, and she watched as said spikes started to crawl towards Zaku, mostly because the amount of chakra she poured in it was less than what she initially started with. Kin, meanwhile, who was left free from being targeted by the spikes, brought out a kanai and wrapped a tag on it. Tch, she scoffed. I didn't think Pinky had it in her, but this is starting to be annoying. I wouldn't worry about it. Zaku sneered, landing beside her as she threw the kunai at Sakura who saw it and dodged it in time. However, due to her exhaustion, she wasn't quick to note the paper wrapped around the hilt, and the sound nin smirked as the girl was caught in the large explosion because of her failure to note said tag. See. However, just as he was about to charge at the seriously injured girl, his ears twitched at a voice shouting. Omit Renge and suddenly he and Kin were pushed back by a massive shockwave that followed a loud explosion once something hit the ground. Boom. When the dust that emerged following that cleared up shortly after, initially he was in shock at what he saw. Dosu. His teammate's head was lodged on the solid earth and that spandex-wearing freak tightly held onto him. Zaku saw red. He charged at the spandex-wearing ninja with a look of rage on his face as when he flipped away from the body of his knocked-out teammate but before he could even reach his new target, a figure blurred in front of him, looking at him with cold blue eyes and said figure, unknown to Zaku and Kin, was none other than the new and improved Naruto Uzumaki. Straining her neck, Sakura looked up at the newcomer with a confused expression on her face, despite the fact that the person she was looking at was hot. W who, Karen landed in front of Sakura in a crouch and immediately, yet tiredly, Sakura got into a rather defensive position in front of Sasuke. Whoa, whoa, easy there, I'm not here to fight, the redhead quickly said, waving her hands in a palicating act of surrender. I'm a friendly, Naruto-kun's the one asked me to help heal you. Sakura blinked, Naruto-kun, and Karen pointed to the rather hot-looking, redhead, that wasn't her, something that caused Sakura's shock to increase tenfold. That's Naruto, her wide in shock and her mouth was hanging wide open. Karen frowned at this though, a bit disturbed by what this implied. You mean you don't know how your own teammate looks? She asked. Sakura blushed, before she shook her head. You don't understand, before now, Naruto didn't look like, that. She stated, motioning to the male newcomer. First, he was blonde, second, his eyes were darker and third, he was definitely shorter and leaner. What the heck happened to him? Karen snapped at Sakura. Are you going to keep asking questions or are you going to let me heal you? Kin's voice from nearby stopped both girls short. Sorry bitch, but I can't let you do that. She said, one of my teammates may be down and other might be busy, but I'm still around. So am I. The voice of Rock Lee proclaimed he jumped in front of the injured Sakura and surprised Karen and stood in a protective stance while staring down Kin, who grit her teeth at the sight of the bowl cut male. Surrender please. I would prefer not to hurt you. Yeah right. Kin snorted, pulling out some Sinban needles from her pouch and taking her battle stance, before sneering at him. If you're going to get me to surrender, you're going to have to fight. Rock Lee closed his eyes in resignation. I wish it didn't have to be this way. Then he appeared behind Kin in a burst of speed and delivering a soft chop to her neck, knocking the sound genin out completely. The fight, if you can call it that, was short but both Karen and Sakura let out a breath they didn't know they were holding, and presented with this distraction, she pulled her sleeve back and offered her exposed skin to Sakura who looked at her in confusion. Bite, no, the pink it deadpanned, earning a sigh of irritation from Karen. I'm not some kind of pervert. Look, Sakura right, my healing requires my patience to bite any part of my exposed skin. She explained, earning a look of curiosity from the pink it. 
If I knew any other way to heal you, don't you think I'd offer it to you instead of this? Besides, we just met, there's no reason for me to lie to you, what's there for me to gain? My scroll, Sakura pointed out, that's what's at stake, and you're probably using Naruto to get to his team so that you could sneak behind us and take our scroll for yourself. Naruto's an idiot so he might not see this but I'm not. That may have been the case, that is if my idiotic teammates hadn't died right before Naruto-kun found me. Karen stated, I'm only here because Naruto-kun asked me to come and I'm only helping you because he asked, now stop arguing and bite me. Everyone within hearing range stopped what they were hearing and turned in unison to look at Karen, who blushed as the sudden realization of what she just said might have implied hit. It's not what you're thinking perverts. And Zaku, very upset at seeing his two teammates defeated, while also using the newcomer's distraction to his own twisted advantage, aimed both his arms at the blonde and called on his chakra. Zankaha. A dust cloud quickly took over the vision of those present, but one thing was clear, Naruto took the attack to his face point blank. Sakura and Karen screamed his name in panic. Naruto, Naruto-kun. Zaku sneered triumphantly. You may have easily taken out my teammates but I'm not letting you take me out like them. I have a mission and I intend to see it through to the end. He declared before aiming his arm at Sakura, Lee and Karen, but then he stopped as once more, Naruto blurred in front of him looking unhurt from his attack. It's going to take a lot more than that to kill me. Naruto commented, his eyes cold and uncaring as he gazed upon the sound genin. Unfortunately for you though, you're not getting that chance. And before Zaku could even respond to that, a blow from Naruto sent him flying backwards and into a second Naruto that intercepted the soaring Zaku with a hard kick that sent the sound nin soaring upwards into the sky and into the soles of a third Naruto that smashed into his gut, forcing out a wad of large blood to spit out of the sound nin's mouth and said sound nin to fall unconscious soon after. Thanks for looking after Sakura-chan and making sure she's safe Lee. The former blonde stated with a thankful smile on his whisker mark face as he stared at the spandex wearing genin in question who just gave him a thumbs up and a grin. You are most welcome Naruto-kun, now I must be off. Naruto watched as Lee flipped into a tree and dashed away from the area, screaming, youth, all the way, after thanking him, before he crossed his arms over his chest and gave out a sigh as he trailed towards Sakura and Karen. I can sense energy you know. I knew from the start that you three have been hiding behind those bushes. He trailed off with his eyes closed as he stopped in front of his teammate, before he opened them. And Sakura-chan, please let Karen heal you, if I didn't trust her, do you think I'd let her near you? Sakura blushed, before she did as Naruto asked and hesitantly bit the offered hand in front of her mouth and as she did, she was suddenly covered from head to toe in green healing chakra while she felt a rush of energy flowing in her. It was at that moment, after a couple of loud noises, that Ino, Choji and Shikamaru all jumped out from the bushes and took a battle stance in front of Naruto, Sakura and Karen. This doesn't have to be messy Naruto, just hand over your scroll and we'll leave without hurting either you or your teammates. Choji said, trying to reason with the one he saw as a friend and ally. Naruto looked at Team 10. Do you three really think you stand a chance? He asked. I've spied at your team from time to time and from what I've noticed, the three of you never actually train or take being a ninja seriously. He stated, remembering the times he was scoping out each of the genin teams to access their threat levels. He wasn't impressed with what he found. All you guys ever do is either eat, play shogi or wonder about how you look for Sasuke-kun. He frowned. What gives you the idea that you can stand up to a guy that can easily create an army of shadow clones and his teammate who can use the terrain around her as a weapon? Don't kid yourself Naruto. Ino snorted. She wasn't going to comment on the terrain part because she saw what Sakura could do and while she wouldn't like to admit it, that scared her. Like you could make any clones, they were your worst subject in the academy. Naruto raised an eyebrow at Ino's retort, before the entire area was suddenly covered in a cloud of smoke something that cleared out a few moments later and only to force Team 10 to see nothing but orange surrounding their field of visions. The former blonde just literally and effortlessly created hundreds of clones, and they were all looking at Team 10 with the same look on the original Naruto's face. Shadow Clone Jutsu, and in response, Team 10 more precisely Ino, suddenly lost all trace of confidence but instead of letting it show too much, 
she decided to vocally show that she was still in control of her and her team's current situation. Well so what? You can make clones. They're just illusions, none of them can harm us. However she suddenly froze as a clone walked up in front of her, and poked her in the head. Ino, you need to learn to shut up. Shikamaru groaned, scratching the back of his head in annoyance as he did, before he looked at Naruto. Look, you clearly have us outnumbered, and it seems that you have a basic idea on how strong we all are. Is there any chance of letting us pick your first offer? I think we have other things to worry about than that, Naruto said, as all his clones dismissed all around him while his eyes currently looked at the body of Sasuke as it was standing next to Sakura and Karen, surrounded by an evil purple chakra, while strange black flame-like marks seemed to crawl around his entire body's right side from head to toe. Meanwhile, with his Sharingan activated, Sasuke looked at both his hands, memorizing this feeling of strength with a look of wonder and understanding on his face. This power, he clenched his hands excitedly. Yes, this power, I feel the power overflowing inside me, he eyes widened in awe, then they narrowed and a malicious grin formed on his face. This power, it feels, great. Finally I feel like I can take him. You three, leave this area at once. Naruto ordered the team behind him as he stood in front of them. If you stay you're only going to make this bad for both yourself and my team. They're not going anywhere, not without helping me test out the power he gave me. Sasuke whispered as his head snapped to Naruto and Team 10. You're too weak for me to test this on dope, consider yourself lucky. If anyone here is weak, it's you Sasuke. Naruto calmly retorted. Only someone with a weak will easily falls for the seductive lure of tainted power, using it only enforces the fact that you're even more weak for not relying on your own strength to fight your battles. And with nothing but hatred, Sasuke glared furiously at his teammate. For that insult, you're going to be the first to fall by the power of my newfound strength. And then faster than almost anyone could follow, he blurred out of existence and appeared behind Naruto with his hand ready to swipe off the blonde's head but the former blonde was able to see this so he sidestepped the attack, causing Sasuke's eyes to widen in surprise. W what the, did I forget to mention? Naruto told Sasuke without even turning back to look at him. You're not the only one that's gone through several improvements lately. And before everyone's eyes, Naruto disappeared, appearing before Sasuke in the blink of an eye before socking the Uchiha's face, despite the fact that the Uchiha's Sharingan was activated and his body was powered by the gift Orochimaru gave him. Ah, uh, all watched as Sasuke was sent backwards with that blow, before massaging his face and spitting out a wad of blood that formed from the injury he got from the former blonde's heavy strike. What the since when can the dope move like that? Surprised. Sasuke froze as he heard the voice of Naruto's voice behind him. Yeah, I was to when I found out that I can move like that but in time, I learned to get used to it. The Uchiha quickly looked behind him to attack the blonde but instead, he saw the panicked faces of Team 10 when he turned and no Naruto. This annoyed him. Where the hell are you? He demanded. Come out and face me dope. Stop hiding like a coward. Didn't you know Sasuke? We're ninja. Naruto's voice said in a rather mocking tone. We use the shadows to our advantage so I suggest that if you don't want to see yourself face first on the ground, I suggest that you give up right now. Like hell, Sasuke ran through a set of hand signs that were unfamiliar to those around, but before he could finish it, a small ball appeared on his face and exploded white powder on his face, causing him to cough wildly as he inhaled the smoke, but then before he could even catch his ground, he suddenly hunched forward and all the air rushed out of his body, as he felt something slam into his stomach. Curse you, he managed to angrily force out, before he lost consciousness and his body slumped forward because the last thing he saw, was Naruto Uzumaki fading into existence. Naruto caught Sasuke before he fell to the ground, however, and swung Sasuke's body over his shoulder like a sack of potatoes when the marks started retreating back to his neck, and then when his ears twitched, he turned to Team 10. Why are you still here? The former blonde asked them. Do you really want to fight me right now? That was their cue to leave, and once they did, Naruto walked up to Karen and Sakura with Sasuke in his arms. Do you have the Heaven Scroll? He asked Sakura, and Sakura nodded as while showing him the scroll as she retrieved it from her weapon's pouch. Good, Karen, is it alright for us to use your scroll to pass this phase of the exam? 
Karen nodded an affirmative. Naruto smiled. Then we have to move quickly to the finish line. Oh, and before I forget, Sakura, the Genin Kabuto is not what he seems. The Pinket blinked. What do you mean? I'll explain later. Opening curly bracket dash dot dot dot. Moments earlier, Kabuto, after acquiring the scroll needed to pass this part of the exam, he handed both to one of his teammates and asked them to wait for him nearby the Chunin exam tower entrance as he had some important business to take care of before he proceeded, that was what he was on his way to do right now as he was hopping from branch to branch to his location and said mission. Making sure that Sasuke-kun safely passed the second phase of the Chunin exam, if he managed to survive his master's seal of course, and Kabuto's hopes was high in Sasuke's ability to do that. His expectations were further confirmed when he felt the familiar chakra spike from his master's seal. Good to see that our hopes in you weren't misplaced Sasuke-kun. He said to himself as he got closer and closer to the source of the spike, only for him to stop his trek as he felt the chakra suddenly disappear. He frowned at this point, and stood straight up on the branch he squatted on. But it looks like you're in a bit of trouble. Orochimaru-sama wouldn't like it if his future vessel was damaged in the slightest and it was his job as a professional medic, and his master's apprentice, to make sure that nothing too damaging happened to Sasuke. Well Naruto-kun, looks like we're going to be, partners for a while, aren't we? Kabuto gave a sly smirk at this point, fixing his glasses on his face while he did, before he squatted and used the branch he was on as a spring to launch himself and resume his tree hopping in double speed. He was unaware that at the moment, Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura and now Karen, we're all on their way to the Chunin exam tower. Opening curly bracket dash dot dot dot. Chunin exam tower. In front of team 7 was a wall with some words written on a paper. There's no earth without heaven, boldly stated in kanji. What the hell does that mean? Karen asked, confused. Naruto, with his increased intelligence, and of course after remembering a certain message from before, immediately picked it up and turned to Karen, while dropping Sasuke's body on the ground. Are you still with your scroll Karen? He asked, and Karen blushed a bit before she nodded an affirmative. All right then, Sakura-chan, bring out our scroll and give it to me, I think I figured out what we need to do. Sakura was surprised that Naruto figured this out faster than she did, and was slightly a bit jealous also, she guessed that his appearance and strength wasn't the only thing that had changed about him. Here, she said, handing him the scroll. What are you going to do with the two scrolls? Open them, Naruto simply answered, Sakura argued, but the examiner lady, Enko sensei said not to open them during the exams. That's right, she said during the exams. Naruto looked at Sakura at this. We've finished our part, we have the two scrolls and crossed the finish line, and if someone isn't here to pick these scrolls from us at the entrance, if these scrolls didn't have a purpose, why give it to us in the first place? He had a point, Sakura thought but was she willing to risk it? Was she willing to risk her chance at passing this part of the Chunin exam because of a speculation on Naruto's part? The same Naruto who was the last in her graduate class? Sure as hell not. She walked up to him and started, Naruto, I don't think we should. Too late. Naruto interrupted her, with nothing in his hands. I already opened the scrolls when you were lost, and distracted. And as he said that, a loud poof was heard coming from the scroll. Naruto, is that, you? It was Aruka sensei and he, like Sakura, and Team Ten were, was currently shocked at what greeted him. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.